California is beginning to recover after two major earthquakes hit the Golden State. Finn, if there were an earthquake like this centered right underneath Los Angeles, we'd be talking about casualties, we'd be talking about significant damage, we'd be talking about billions of dollars in losses. Thousands of aftershocks have the region on edge. Every time the ground starts shaking, the mine goes back. Welcome back to our channel. I've gotten so many emails and DMs and comments asking if we're okay. So we are okay, but it really, going through that, really propelled me to make this video. Los Angeles was not really negatively impacted by those earthquakes. Um, the epicenter was quite far away from us, but let me tell you, they, they were strong. They were still strong despite being far away from us. I think the first one on the 4th of July was like a 6.4 magnitude and then the second one was a 7.1 and that's nothing to be played around with. They were Lenin's first real earthquakes. Now we've experienced kind of small tremors here and there because it's not really uncommon to feel those in LA a couple times a year, but those were definitely her first kind of real earthquakes and she was terrified. She literally bolted across the room and just ran under the couch and started thumping. A lot of people say that animals can sense earthquakes before they happen. I don't think Lennon really sensed it. I think she noticed it whenever I noticed it and that was when the apartment just started rocking back and forth. I was home for the first earthquake and then I wasn't home for the second one. But going through all that really propelled me to make this video because I couldn't find any videos on the internet about what to do with your rabbits in this situation or articles for that matter. And even if you don't live in a region where earthquakes are common, you can take a lot of this information and apply it to your own environments because no matter where you live, you're always going to be susceptible to some kind of natural disaster. Whether it is earthquakes, hurricanes, blizzards, floods, tornadoes, fires, you just never know. And it's always good to be prepared for something like that. So I did quite a bit of research here. I even have my notes. So the first thing that you have to do, and I disagreed with this initially, is you have to take care of yourself first. And I know that our first instinct as bunny parents is we want to grab our rabbits and run for it. But honestly, if you think about it logically, you're not gonna be able to help your rabbit if you're not helping yourself first. And so it's kind of like when you're in an airplane and they tell you that before you can help others with their oxygen masks, you need to put your own oxygen mask on first. It's the same thing. Unless your rabbit is within arm's reach of you, all right, don't spend time trying to look for them, trying to chase after them, trying to pick them up if you're in the middle of a really strong earthquake. You need to drop under a table or a bed or something and you need to cover yourself. So that's the first thing you wanna do. The second thing you wanna do is wait out the shaking. So with an earthquake, you never know how long it's gonna last. It could last 10 seconds long, it could last 60 seconds long. And you never know when it's gonna peak as well. So you might think that it's over, but it's really not. And then there's also aftershocks with an earthquake. So, you know, wait out as much as possible. Make sure that the shaking has fully stopped before you go and try and find your rabbit. Now three, let your rabbit run off this is gonna be hard, hard for you to do, but let your rabbit run off into safety. Rabbits are actually very smart and being prey animals, this is where being a prey animal is gonna benefit them. They will know where to find safety because they are so incredibly good at hiding. If you do happen to grab your rabbit, they might be very scared and try to jerk out of your arms. Anytime a rabbit tries to jerk out of your arms, they are susceptible to injury. Rabbits have very fragile bone structure. They can easily break their spine 
or their leg or whatever it is trying to jump out of your arms. A lot of people also have trouble picking up their rabbits because they don't know how or they're just not good at it. They haven't had enough practice with it. So just don't try to do something that you're not good at. Unless you have the experience of just being able to scoop up your rabbit very quickly and very swiftly, just don't. Now, if your rabbit is confined, so let's say they live in an X pen or God forbid a cage. We all know that I don't believe rabbits should live in cages. That's really going to limit their ability to find a safe hiding space. If they have a hidey house in the X pen, that's gonna help a lot. Um, but it has to be a strong hidey house. It can't just be like a cardboard box. The only good thing about having them confined is it makes it easier to locate them. If you do have a rabbit that does let you hold them in this situation, the best way to protect your rabbit is not to apply pressure and like squeeze them up against your chest. It's to curl over them in a fetal position and kind of create a little roof over them. Five, be familiar with your rabbit's behaviors and hiding places. Now this falls into the category of getting to know your rabbit, which I stress in all of our bonding videos. You need to get to know your rabbit's behavioral patterns and where they like to hide. So for me, I know Lennon's favorite place to hide is always going to be under the couch in the living room. Her second favorite place to hide is under my bed in my bedroom. So six, have emergency contacts. I say have at least three people who you can call. If you're at school or at work and you're not home when something like this happens, you need to be able to call someone, whether it's a neighbor or a friend, who can check up on your rabbit. Get your rabbits microchipped and nowadays, Whenever bunnies get spayed or neutered, they tend to get microchipped at the same time. So that's something you can do when you're getting them fixed. If your rabbit is not already microchipped, just go get it done. It's really not that expensive and you can kind of go anywhere for that. You don't have to go to a rabbit savvy vet. Every time there's a natural disaster, especially an earthquake, tons of pets get lost. It's just a very easy and efficient way to reunite the animal with their owner. Next, have a pet first aid kit. I recently went out and bought this and it's just an actual pet first aid kit. And I'm gonna link all this stuff in the description below, by the way. But let me just tell you, I mean, it is so convenient to have something like this and you can use a lot of these supplies for yourself as well. I'm just gonna read to you what this first aid kit includes. It comes with a parachute cord, sting relief pads, tweezers, tape roll, bandages, cotton swabs, tongue depressors, hand sanitizer, instant cold pack, rubber gloves, gauze pads, gauze rolls, abdominal pad, alcohol prep pad. And then this one really caught my attention, but it's a thermal foil emergency blanket. And we all know rabbits have trouble regulating their own temperatures. So that's really important to have. Scissors, iodine prep pad, bottle opener. Yeah, really important to have that. And then you can also add in a couple of your own things. And so what I recommend adding is baby gas drops. Now some people swear by this for GI stasis and other people don't. Now I'm not a vet, but just get the gas drops. It will provide at least a little bit of relief and lubrication if your bunny does go into stasis. It might not cure stasis, but it will at least buy you some time until you can get to a rabbit savvy vet. All right, so then also have a thermometer, Vaseline, and a syringe. All of that is going to be very useful. All right, this is also very important. I've been meaning to get this for years and I just never have. Now I did. But it's basically these emergency rescue stickers and you just stick it onto your front door or front window. It's self-adhering and basically it notifies first responders that there is a pet in your house. Now the one at the store that I bought this from didn't have one that said 
there's a rabbit but I'm going to link the Amazon one that says there's a rabbit if you want that specific one. Um, this one also just lets you write in the animal. So if firefighters show up or police show up, this will alert them that there is a pet or a rabbit in your house or apartment. Very, very useful. Otherwise, how are they going to know? And that's also great for fires or any sort of thing where your rabbit could be trapped inside and they need someone to get them out. And I also ordered the wallet version and the keychain version of this stuff. So if something happens to you, they can look in your wallet and it'll say, my pet is home alone, please contact. And you can put down your emergency contact. Um, and same thing goes for the keychain. Get some pet remedy or rescue remedy or tranquility blend from Small Pet Select. These are all different little supplements that you can give your bunnies if they're under a lot of stress, it'll calm them down. It's kind of like taking a Xanax, but for bunnies in a natural way. Okay, this one's really important is have enough food and water to last at least seven days. Not just for yourself, but for your rabbits. Now the crappy thing about the rabbit diet is a lot of it is perishable with the exception of hay and pellets. Now, I'm not a fan of pellet heavy diets. They tend to cause obesity and a lot of health issues. I give Lennon a very limited quantity of pellets, but it's good to have pellets in the event of an earthquake. If you do happen to have electricity, you can also freeze stuff. Um, I wouldn't freeze like lettuces, but you can freeze stuff like celery and broccoli and then have hay. So hay is 80% of a rabbit's diet, which is great because hay is not perishable. Just make sure that when you are buying your hay, I always recommend buying large quantities. And I always have like a small little backup bag of hay in the trunk of my car have enough water for at least seven days not just for you but for your rabbit now this one doesn't quite apply to earthquakes unless there's like a tsunami but I couldn't help myself I had to buy it because it was so cute but I got a life jacket this is very useful in the event of a flood especially but we all know rabbits should not be submerged in water so don't buy this for your rabbit because you think like it'll be fun to throw them in some water don't do that. This is just for an emergency. I like that it's orange so you can easily find your rabbit. This is just a small one that's for like a five pound dog. Lennon is about five pounds so it, it will fit her. Make sure you have at least two rabbit savvy vets that you can turn to after the earthquake in case one is not available. And surround yourself with other bunny lovers in your community. So whether that's in a Facebook group, an online forum, volunteering at your local rabbit rescue or animal shelter, the more people that you can reach out to for help or advice in these emergency situations, the better. Maybe some of those people can become part of your emergency contact list as well. All right guys, so that's it for this video. I hope you found it useful. I know I sounded like a panicky mess, but these earthquakes really opened my eyes and I just think it's better to be prepared. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and we'll see you all soon. Bye.